Welcome to the sixth lecture in network security. Uh, so today um, we'll start explaining one real algorithm that has been used for so many years. DES. I'm sure many of you have heard about DES, DES. Uh, in the previous lectures, we introduced you um, to a lot of background how to build um, uh, a real uh, algorithm. So this is the first real algorithm that is used everywhere. I'm sure you have uh, come across it before. And we, you'll see that every previous lecture will add to this. So the math models, the math explanation that we went through is very important. The uh, last class where we spoke about thesal models, about uh, inversion, invertible blocks, P boxes, S boxes, all of these things, it will be a, a major component to understand uh, this. So I hope that you went over the homework and uh, you are familiar uh, with. So we'll uh, review the this history, then we'll talk about the basic structure of this, then we'll describe the details, how to build the elements of this, and then uh, we, uh, we describe the uh, round key generation process, then we analyze this. When we talk about analysis here, we talk about security analysis, how secure it is, all right? And then we explain um, why uh, why we are moving away from uh, this. We'll talk about double this, this, triple this, and a few other uh, things as we move on. All right. So uh, it's uh, this is data encryption standard, and it's a symmetric key block uh, cipher. So there's two words in here. It's a symmetric key. That means we have one shared key. One shared key. It's not a public key. We did not come till now to the algorithms where we have two keys. We have one key, which we call the private key or symmetric key. Symmetric, why the word symmetric? Because the sender and the receiver will have the same key to encrypt and to decrypt. All right? And why we call it block cipher? Because there is two techniques. There is uh, stream ciphers and block, block ciphers. We explained that last time. So in here we divide the data into blocks, okay, fixed size blocks, encrypt them. So we encrypt the first block, the second block, the third block, so on and so forth. That's why we call it uh, block cipher, okay? And um, it was published by NIST, or uh, the National Institute of Standard and uh, Technology. All right. So in 1973, NIST published a request for proposals for a national symmetric key crypto system. A proposal from IBM, a modification of a project called uh, Lucifer, I think Lucifer or something like that, was accepted as a desk. <coughs> it was a project called by the government. People subscribed to it. IBM did, all right? And this was published in the federal registration in March 1975 as a draft of the Federal Information Processing Standard FIPS. All right. So, overview here. So this is a block cipher. Remember that in this class we're going to study two kinds, block and stream, and they work a little bit differently. We explain them last class, but we'll come in real applications later on. Okay, so the block size is 64 bit, 64 bit. It's going to go to the this cipher, the algorithm, which we're going to discuss right now, and it will give you the cipher text. The key size is 56 bit, 56 uh, bit uh, key, and the key will be used for both encryption and for decryption. So the flow, you're going to have a plain text at the center. It will be encrypted using the same key. You're going to generate the cipher text, and the cipher text will be sent to the receiver. The receiver has the same key, the private key, the symmetric key, will do the decryption, all right? So our role today is to know what is inside this box. What is the algorithm? Okay. Uh, professor, the text will be always 64 bit. The block always 64 bit. And the key should be 56 bit. It is fixed. It's fixed. Okay. So if you have a data, big data, you're gonna divide it into blocks of 64 bits. If the last block is short, you have to do padding. And we explain what's padding last class, right? Okay, so, all right. 
All right. So again, what we're gonna talk about is this yellow box. We're gonna explain it very well, how it's spelled. So once you know how it's spelled, if I ask you to write a C code or C++ or Java or any code, high level definition code, you'll be able to write it by yourself because you know exactly how it's spelled. Remember in Kirchhoff's principle, can somebody remind me with Kirchhoff's principle? Um, the, the key should be hidden. Uh, uh, the algorithm can be shared, but the key should be uh, hidden. Uh, algorithm is known, but the key, key is known secret. Is hidden. So we never hide the, uh, all of that. So uh, the encryption process is made of two permutations, P boxes. We explained what P boxes last time which we call initial and final permutations, and then 16 piece of rounds. We spoke about rounds last time. So let's take a look. That's the block. So you're gonna start with the 64 plain text. You're gonna have initial permutation box, and you're gonna have inverter for it, which is the final permutation block, all right? And you're gonna have how many rounds? 16 rounds. So round one, it has a key one. Round two, key two. Round 16, key 16. What is the size of the keys? 48 bits only. Where they are generated from? From the 56 bit. So 56 bit, that's the key. Right? All right, it's gonna go to round key generation, and from the 56 bits, we're gonna generate how many keys? 16 keys. Each one is 48 bits, all right? So in this class, we're gonna zoom in this box. We're gonna know how it works. We're gonna zoom in all of these. We're gonna zoom in this. We're gonna zoom in all of these. We're gonna keep zoom in. See how it's spelled. These blocks, okay? So that's exactly the this. That's the this block. So when you go to the initial, where is the initial? That's the initial uh, here. Initial. Let's go inside this initial permutation. So it's a P box, right? So what will happen? Okay, it is a pre-designed, pre-designed box, okay? So the input number one, for example, gonna go to 40. Number two gonna go 80. So, so number 64 gonna go 25 and so on and so forth. It's a P-box designed to pre-design this, this way. So the data will go to the 16 rounds, as you see in here, the 16 rounds. And this, it will reverse this. This is the final step. So, number one will go where? 56. To 58. To 58, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, 64 comes from where? 25. Yeah. If you look in here, 25 comes from where? 64. 64. So, this will reverse this. All right? They cancel each other. Clear? But, well, Professor, this uh, in final permutation, number one is coming to 58, but in initial permutation... Number one is 40. 40. We'll go 40. Yeah. What is 14 here? Number one. Ah, okay. Okay? Yeah. All right? All right. All right. So, this is how the initial and final permutation. So, this is the initial. So, number one going to where? To 58. It's a clear in here. Number one going to where? Uh, what is it? Down on the second oh, 58 got coming from number one, right? Mm -hmm. So 50, uh, 58 coming from number. So this is this is the output in here, okay? This is the okay. This is the uh, permutations. So where is the output coming? This is coming from. So this is the output coming from one. This is coming from two, three, four, and so on and so forth. And that's the final permutation. So this reverse this. Clear? Wait. Okay. Can you just look at those two blocks and do the reverse without? What? Can you do the reverse with just the two blocks of data? Reverse? Uh -huh. Can you reverse that just by having that one? So this is the initial permutation. This is in here. So. We represent this box as a matrix like that. No, I'm, I'm saying, can you get that box if you get that box, if you know what that box is? If, can I get that box? Yeah, if you know what that box is. Well, this reverse this. So remember that this inverse this. Mm -hmm. All right? So if you remove this in here, 
if you remove this, remove this part. So one goes to where? Let's, let's talk about, for example, uh, one. One, where is it going? 40. So you're going to go where? Here, 40, right? 40 going where? One. One. That's it. They're inverting each other. Okay? For confusion and diffusion. So, um, so I think I know what it's asking. If you don't get, if, if you are not provided with this diagram, and on the other side, the other slide, the, yeah. yeah, you get the initial permutation, but you don't get the fin final permutation. You get both of them. Can you make the final permutation sure. from the initial without that, the previous slide? Both are provided for you. So this information provided to you, and this information provided to you, to anyone. Right. Okay, it's provided. Okay? All right, uh, so example in here. Okay, find the output of the initial permutation box when the input is given in the hexadecimal. That's the input. So each one of these, this is like hexadecimal. So this, how many bits? Four bits, four bits, four bits. So, if, so this will be how many bits total? 64 bits, all right? So, so what you do, uh, So, 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 um, so, so each you have to convert this is to a binary. It will be 64 bits, right? 64 bits, and the output it will go to where? To here, right? To here. So if it's one in here, the number 40 will get one. If it's binary zero, it will be zero, right? So the way you do it. Very simple. Convert this to binary, okay, and start from here. One, two, three, four, five, up to sixty-four, and see where is the ones. So how many ones we have in here? How many ones? Start from the here, the ray of the okay. The first zero will be zero, 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 uh, four zeros. The second zero, four zeros. Four zeros. Four zeros. Then four zeros. Right? And then four zeros. Then the eight. How you write the eight? Zero. How you write the eight? Zero. <coughs> Triple one. So one zero zero zero. One zero zero one. Right. Right. All right. So continue. Okay. The last one will be what? How you write the last one? Zero one zero one. Right. The oh, oh, two. The two there. How you write it? This is two. Right. So this is like zero. From left, you see the x there. This is zero. Zero, 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 zero. This what is it? Eight. What is this? Two. Two. Okay, and there's zeros, right? So the output, how many zeros, how many ones will it have? Three. How many? Two. two. So, so for example, in here, bin number two is one. Will go where? Bin number two will go where? It's, uh, it's uh, one, zero. one zero zero. Zero one, and this is one zero zero. So this is bit what? 64. And this is bit what will be in here? I think it's bit, uh, let me check, 15. This is will be bit 15, right? All right, 15. So you're gonna go to the table in here. So the, you're gonna go to the table. Okay, um, and one in here, what, what is it? The one is going to go to where? 
to bit number 58. So you're going to go for the output, bit number 58, you make it what? 1. And uh, the other one, where is it? Which is, this is uh, 164, and this is number 15. 15 goes where? So 15. So count, what is 15? So this is 8, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Plus 8, 16 here, 12. It will be to 12. Okay? So in the output, bit number 12 and 1 will be how much? Binary 1. And then you, you write it as, so that's how it will be. Right? So in the output, bit number 1 will be 1 and uh, uh, bit number 12, number 12 and number 1. Okay? So only bit 25 and bit 64 are ones. So this is 64 and this is 25, uh, not 12, I'm sorry, 25, are ones. The other bits are zeros. In the final permutation, bit 25 becomes 64, okay? And bit 63 becomes bit 15. Clear? Questions? You expand it to binary. You're gonna know which input. You're gonna know which input in here is one, and you see where it goes in here, and then you write it again as hexadecimal, as simple as that. All right. Take take uh, now the reverse. If you take if you pass this one to the final step, which is here, it should give you the input. So remember that's the output from the uh, initial permutation. Pass it to the final permutation. Okay, and do the reverse process. You're gonna come to the you're gonna come to the initial one. So the initial and the final permutation they reverse each other. Clear? Any questions? I could repeat. All right. All right. So the initial and final permutations are straight p boxes that are inverses of each other. They have no cryptographic significance significance in this. They have no significance. They reverse each other. Now, we're going to come to the rounds. How many rounds we have? 26 rounds. Remember last time what we did? We divide. So we have 64 bit. We divide it to the right side and the left side. We, we explained this last time also. So what will happen? We're going to talk about generation. So for round 1, we're going to have key 1. For round i, we're going to have key I. Okay? So what will happen? We'll start from the right the right side. So the right side goes all the way to the left side. Did we do anything to it? No. no. We just moved it. So the right side moved all the way to the left side. Okay? Now, the left side will be XORed with a function will be XORed with a function. What is the size of the left side? 32. 32. The output of this function, what is it? Should be 32. And will be XORed and will be saved where? At the right side. Clear? So we need to take a look at the function. The function is a process that involves what? The right side with the key of that rung. We're going to take a look at the function in a second, right? All right. So this is the round. That's the, basically the round. The round, the, the input you divide it in two parts, left and right. The size of each part is 32 bits. For the right part, it will go all the way as it is to where? To the left part. Okay? For the right, for the, for, for the left part, it will go to a, it, it will be XORed with a result of a function. The function is built of an operation, we don't know it yet, involves the right side and the key of the round. Okay? And that will be the output. This process will be repeated where? In every round. It will be repeated in every round. How many times? 16, 16 times. All right. So, so let's take a look at the function. Now we're gonna study this function. You see the white box in here? We're gonna study this box, the white function, the, the function. 
So the heart of this is that this function, that this function applies a 48-bit. So what will happen? What's the input for this function? How many inputs we have? Huh? 32 bits, right? What is the size of the key? Huh? 48. All right, so look in here. So we start with the 32 bits. We're gonna go to expansion B box. You know what's expansion B box. So we're gonna expand the 32 to how much? 48. So now in here, in here will be 32 expanded to how much? 48. And in here we're getting 48, we're gonna have a function. Okay? So we're gonna go to expansion function, will give you 48 bits. Now, what we are exploring, the expanded 32 bit to 48 bit with the key which is 48 bit. That's why we did the expansion. Right? You know what's expansion, right? Yes. We did that, right? Now we begin to pass everything into what? S boxes. So how many S, uh, uh, S boxes, right? So it's gonna go to S boxes. How many S boxes we have? One, eight. two, three, four, eight. five, six, eight. Eight divided by four, eight, how much? Six. Six. So how many inputs to each, uh, each S box? Six. Six times eight, how much? Four, eight, four, eight right? Mm -hmm. All right, so how much input for, for each box? Six. All right? Right? Let's take a look. We're going to take a look, right? And the, the output of the S box is how many? The output of the S box is how many? 32. So what we are doing in here? Shrinking. We're going to shrink. We're going to see how we're going to shrink. And then it's going to go to straight P box. Straight P box 32. So from 48, we're going to change to 32. 32. We started with 32. Okay, so let's keep on, all right? Aha, so in here, what we have in here? <coughs> let's, ta let's take a look in here, expansion box, how the expansion box happens. So we started with 32 and we ended with 48. So four, it becomes six, four becomes six, four becomes six. So we moved from 32 bit to 48. We're talking about one, what? about the expansion box in here. How we did it, very simple. So, okay, we pass, pass. So what we do, this one, so let's take a look in here in the middle. So the first one in this box comes from where? From the last one or from the previous? And the last one comes from where? The first one from the next. So that's how we expand, we added two. So we pass the four, we add it two to the one to the beginning and one to the last. The beginning comes from the previous end. And the last comes from the first next. Clear? The last one in here gonna go where? Here. That's it. Clear? So what is this? Expansion. We expanded 32 bits to 48 bits. All right? Somebody will ask, why, why you did it like that? I don't care. That's the designers. They designed it like that. We, we are explaining to you right now a real algorithm used. That's how, what's the goal? Why they are doing all of these? For diffusion and confusion. To mix everything. Blend, remember the story with the blender, with, uh, with you know, mix and all of that. All right? So now, now you understand how this works. We understand how we came from 32 to... So if I ask you to write code for this expansion box, is it easy or not easy? Easy. And you see code, it's very easy. You know the rules now, right? Very easy, right? Then, after, and this is the expansion box. So, I mean, this is how you figure it, but this is how, 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 it, how it is, all right? All right? So it's very clear. So 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, the lot. So the first one comes from where? From the last. Okay, and the last uh, in here will comes where? From the beginning of the next one in here, right? Right. So it's very easy to write this this code. Anyways, all right. Then we come to the whitener. Where is the whitener? Here. As we call it, whitener. 
we do XR with the key. The key generation, we'll talk about it later, okay? We come to the white noise. So white noise, what does it do? What does it do? XR, the 48 bit with the 48 bit, okay? So then after that, the expansion permutation, this uses the XR operation on the expanded right section and the round key. Note that both the right section and the key are 48 bits after the expansion. Okay, then we divide the 48 into what? SP, S boxes. S boxes do the real mixing, which is the confusion. Okay, this uses eight S boxes, eight S boxes, each with a six bit input and four, eight, four bit output. The input is six, the output is four. That's why 48 bit, 48 bits becomes at the end how many? 32 bits, all right? So now we need to we need to take a look at the S-Box, how it works inside it, right? All right, so that will be the output. So that's how is the S-Box work, okay? So you're gonna take, you're gonna take the, first, uh, uh, the, the first bit and you make it for a column, for the row number, okay? And you will take the, the, um, um, so this includes bit two, three, four, and you take the six bit, okay, to to tell you, you, you know, to to select from which you know table entry, okay. So, so how many bits we have? Wait a second. So how many bits we have in here? How many bits we have? Six. So bit one and bit two, two bits. How many options would give you? Four. Two, two to the power two, four. So it would be zero, one, two, three, right? The other four bits, which is bit two, three, four, five, will give you how many options? Sixteen. Sixteen. From zero to? Fifteen. Fifteen. So it will select that column number. The table is a pretty a preset, so each box will have a pre a preset. So this, so this is for S box one, all right. So if the input of S box one, if the input of S box one, let's take example. If, let's say it's zero, 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 zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So we have to know the output. The out. How many bits the output should be? This is six bits, right? The output will be four bits. So we got to start with, with the first and last, zero, zero. Zero, zero means what? Means which row? Zero. Zero. And the column is also is what? Zero. Where is the column zero? Zero. So what's the value? Fourteen. So fourteen is fourteen. How you write fourteen in, as a binary? One 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 zero. Zero. One 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 zero. One one zero. One 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 zero. Three ones and one zero. Yeah. Three ones and one zero. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Four bits. You have to have four bits. All right. All right. So it will be uh, two to power. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, zero. Okay. Um, one. Uh, two, four, eight. Eight plus uh, four, how much? Twelve. And two. And two. Forty. One, one, zero. Okay? So that will be the output. That's the input, and that's the output. Clear? So how many tables like that we have? How many tables like that we have? The number of, how many boxes we have? A. So you're gonna have preset how many tables? Eight. Uh, it's not on the PowerPoint. We're gonna have eight different tables for each S box. Sorry. So for each S box, we're gonna have how much? Eight. Table. All right. So so the, the the input will be six bits and the output will be four bits. All right. So who put the tables? Who designed these tables? The algorithm designer. Why they choose these numbers, we don't know. 
All right. If you look at the book, in the book, these are the 16 tables. You will see the 16 tables for each box. Okay. So if I tell you a question in the exam, uh, is box seven. The input is one zero zero one zero zero. zero. What is the output? All you have to take a look at the S box seven table and apply the rule. You know the output. Yes. In the exam, would we be giving a table? Huh? Would we be giving a table in the exam? No, you have to memorize it. <laughs> of course, I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't depend on memory here. We depend on understanding. Yes. Uh, professor, for these X boxes. Yeah. Are we, is it the job of the, um, I'm just digressing in. Yeah. No, uh, are we, um, as a network security engineer, yeah. programming this individual? Um, in the class, you mean? No, like in real life scenario now. No, uh, you are as a, a network, okay, okay. Uh, network security or uh, cyber security is, is like multiple disciplines, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are an application level, you don't understand how algorithm work, right? You, you apply the algorithm. Input, this, output, right? But if you are a scientist, if you are an engineer, wouldn't you be interested to understand how is the algorithm work? Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, if you are a researcher, which you're going to do a research in this, you will be coming up with a new algorithms, right? So you have to understand how is the algorithms are working, okay, inside. Right? So remember, and remember in here what you are doing. You are doing masters in computer science and engineering. Mm -hmm. you are, this is not a vocational school, not a technical school. Okay? We don't train you to install antivirus mm -hmm. in here and tell you, okay, this is like, you know, it's uh, okay. So real life depends on what life you choose. So here's a question in real life do we need to know this? Depends on what life you're going to choose. Myself, I choose to be in academia and research. In development, you know, if you finish in here and you go work for a development company, you'll be writing a group. You need all of this. If you're gonna work as a technician, you know, uh, remove viruses, detect the COVID virus. That's a different story. In here, again, remind. Uh, I, I mean, here we are. Uh, you know, you're doing masters. So here we're trying to build the brains, okay, brains and uh, um, you know, research and all of that. So. Did I answer your question? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. So that's the table. So that's the example. I already gave you examining in the board, but this is another example. So Xbox One, you have this. This is the bits. So what you have to do, you have to take bit number one and six. This would be one one, right? One one. And then you take this will be also what? One. Okay. So the first, the one one will give you three. And this zero 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 one will give you what? Will give you what? What's the row? What's the row number from here? You take the la first bit and the last bit will give you the row number. What's the row number? Three one one. What is the column number? One. one. Why one zero zero one is one? Come on, let's see here. Huh? One zero 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 one. You take this and this. You see one one will give you three. What is this? Row number. And this one in here. You take this in here. Will give you what? One. Zero 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 one. Give you one. one. So this is the row number, and this is the column number. You need to convert that. You have to go. What is it? You have to go to the table back. Okay. Row number three. Column one, how much? Twelve. Twelve. So that would be the output. Right? The output would be twelve. <coughs> Anyways. <coughs> All right. So let's go back to our block. See where are we? All right. So then after that, what we're gonna have? So we already we already studied this, right? The expansion. We already started the S boxes. Now let's take a look at the straight box. Straight box is straight box. There's a P straight box, okay? Which is here. That's a straight box. So the output 16 comes from where? Input number one. 
Output zero seven it comes from where? Two. Input number two. Output uh, output thirty two comes from where? From input 32. number twenty five. Thirty two here thirty two right? Yeah. We have zero to up to thirty two. So output number thirty two comes from where? Twenty five. Input thirty two goes where? Where is thirty two? Input, input 32. Uh, Where is input 32? Uh, down the 21. Yeah. Uh, where is 32? 21. Uh, 21. 21. 21. 31. 32. Yeah. So it goes where? If, 31. if, if 32 goes where? 21. We're going to go to 21. Alright? Alright. So, so far, Mr. Engineers, Miss and Mr. Engineers, here we have learned everything. We, we, we know how we design this, we know how to design this, we know how to design the S boxes, we know how to design the straight box. The only thing remaining now is the key. Right? Okay, so. Let's talk about the, the reverse cyber. So in the reverse cyber, the approach, the first approach, in here what we do, we're building like a block, cross, second block, well not a block, we call it round, round one. So remember, we start with the initial and the final. Remember that? And we already started this. Then we have round one, round two, round three, up to round 16, right? And we started how, how it works inside, right? Key gonna come, key gonna come, and uh, okay. so uh, for the last one because we have to make it reverse, we don't switch. So this goes like that, and here you have to switch. Here you don't switch, and and here it goes straight, right? And then the data for the reverse, we start from here. So the last, the, we start with the last last key first, and the second the, the second to the last key until the first key to get the decryption. All right. So if you look in here, we, we knew how we built this, we knew how to build all the RAM, we knew how to build this, we knew how to build all of that. That's for the reverse. Alright? Now we're going to talk about key generation. The only thing we did not speak about is the key generation. So what is the initial key size? 58 bits, right? Actually 64. There is 8 bits for parity check. You know it's parity check, right? So that's easy. You remove the 8 bits. How much remains? 56 bits, right? All right. So look in here. So the key with the parity bits is 64. You're going you're gonna, to we're gonna shrink it to how much? 56 bits. The real key, this parity, anybody can calculate them, right? So the real, the real bits, how much? 56 bits. So we're going to divide them into parts. So 56 time, uh, divided by 2, how much? 28. So we have left side and right side. 58 bits, 58 bits. All right? Then we're going to come to a box called the compression box. Compression box. All right. So 28 plus 28, how much? 56. We're going to compress them to be 48 bits. Okay, let me go back, 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 remind you. So the K in here, how much it was? Let me go back to remind you more, 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 more. Here, how much? Only eight bits, right? Remember that, right? So we are here, right? So 28 bits, 28 bits, this, uh, this is 56. It will gonna get out 48 bits. This will be the key for round one. Good. Then the output from oh, there is a lift shift and there is a lift shift. So lift shift, you know, remember we studied about the components, the lift shift, the circular lift shift in the last class. Let me use it in here. So in round one and two and nine and sixteen, we have one bit round shift. In rounds other other rounds, we're gonna have two bits lift shift. So this is round number one. How many bit lift shift we have? One. You know what's left shift, right? Yeah. 
you will explain that. So if I have this like this, for example, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So what's the left shift? Zero. zero comes here and this goes, right? Yeah. Left shift. If I have two left, two two bit left shifts, what will happen? Zero. The one will be here, right? Like you do it twice, right? So some rounds will have some rounds will have one bit lift shift. Okay, some rounds will have two bit lift shift. Rules. Again, you'll ask me why. Why the design is designed like that? All right. You buy a car, you a, a, a Corolla. Okay, the dashboard it looks ugly. Why? Oh, that's. You buy a Mercedes whatever S. The dashboard looks very good. Why? Design is designed like that, right? You don't like this, go buy the other one, or you like that, buy you know the first one. Okay, it's your choice, right? So the designer designed this way, for what? For diffusion and confusion. All right. So we generated that around T1. This will go in here, okay, and this will go in here. Lift shift. So this is a second round. Second round will have one bit shift, right? And then the process repeats, and we're gonna have T2, T3 until T. 16. So that's how is the generation of the keys. All right. So if you need to look at in here, what is this? Compression box. We compressed from 64 to. That's the compression. We remove the bit. So that's. We're gonna use this table. Right. All right. Then you have the number of bits, uh, bit shifts. So we said that for example, round one has one. Bit shift, two, one, three, two, bit shifts, three, four, bit shift, and so on. So That's the rules the designer has implemented. Okay? Then key compression. Where is key compression? Here. We compressed from? 56 From 56 to 48. Again, it follows a certain, uh, certain uh, rules. What are uh, key compression? That's, a, that's the key compression table. Okay. All right. So, bit uh, output number one comes from where? 14. Input number fourteen, and so on and so forth. Okay. So this is the algorithm. All right. All right. Let's take a look. We choose a random, a plain text block, and random key, and determine what cyber block would be. Oh, okay. So the plain text. Let's say this is a plain text. What is the size of this plain text supposed to be? Sixty-four bits. Right. And the key size, this is a key size. What is supposed to be the size of the key size? 56 bits without parity bits. That's the output. Okay, that's the So plain text, okay? Look at the, 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 the confusion and diffusion. Remember in the algorithm what we do, we divide it to left side and right side. So after initial permutation, this becomes like that. Not a big change, you know, okay, there's a lot of code. After splitting L0, so we split it in half, right? This is left side and this is right side. So take a look. At the first round, this is the left, this is the right, this is the round key. Second round, third round, fourth round, okay, until the 16th round. When you look at the, the, final, the final round, it's completely different data from the beginning. So after combination, this will be the input and it's completely different from that. Uh, this input, is, it's completely different from the output. So the cipher looks completely different. All right? Okay. And that's the whole idea. It's kind of, we, 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 we made the data go through the blender, blender, blender. The output is completely different. The output is completely different, All right? So let us uh, see how Bob and other distribution can decipher the, okay. So what you have in here, you have the ciphertext, okay, after initial permutation and after splitting. So now we gotta do decryption, okay, the same thing, the reverse process until the end, until you get the plain text you started with, right? So the data is completely blended. Together. And this real encryption algorithm that is used for so many years. We just now not too many views because we have much more stronger algorithms, right? All right. 
So let's take, take a look at the analysis. Uh, of, uh, so there was a critique about the, st the strength of the, the disk. So there's some, there are some weak keys we're going to take a look at, at them. So look in here, for example. Two desired uh, properties of the block cipher are the avalanche of effect and a completeness. What is avalanche effect? That if you change one pit, the whole output com completely changes. Like domino effect, right? Avalanche effect. Changing one pit, everything will change. Okay? So if you see, look in here, for example, look at this plain text. All zeros. Look at this key. And that's a cybertext. So this input, we changed only one bit from the input, from the plain text. We use the same key. Look, the output is completely different. Look at this cybertext, and look at the cybertext. Just one bit change in the plain text made the cybertext completely different. That's average effect. But why is the key the same? That's what the test, we need to test it. So what I'm saying, if we, in the play test, we change only one bit and we use the same key, it's completely different. That's the test. <laughs> so we're using the same key to tell you, I mean, if you use different key, we can't prove anything, right? It will be different anyway, right? So now we're using the same key, the inputs, they have one bit change. But you look at the output, look at this output, and look at the output. Completely different. All right. So, although the two plaintiff blocks differ only in the rightmost bit, which is one bit, the cyber text blocks differ in 29 bits. That's average. That's a lot. If we can make it to be 50 bits, even better. If we make it all of them change, that's even better. Right? Right? So. This means that the cha changing approximately 1.5% of the plate takes it creates a change of approximately 45%, which is a very good thing. Okay, completely effect. Complete effect means that each bit of the cybertext needs to depend on many bits on the plain text. So the output, so we have we start from one bit. We're gonna have output. So input number one. And output number one, we to get to output number, we we have depended in all the almost all the input bits, right? So so, so it, it has happened it has happened in S box, in the P box, in the number of rounds. So let's take a look at the weaknesses. Okay, during the last few years there is some critique. So there is uh, weakness in the S box, there is weaknesses in the B box, some weaknesses like that. Look in here, these are weak keys, for example. So if keys before uh, um, uh, part of this uh, dropped in here, these are the actual keys, okay? These are kind of weak keys, all right? So why they are weak? So let us try to first uh, check the weak keys in here. Um, so if you do Encryption it twice will get back into the plain text. So look in here. So this is the key. This is one of the weak keys, right? In here. There's a weak key, right? This is the plain text. You encrypt this using this key, give you this, right? Take this in here, put it here, and encrypt it again with the same key, will give you the same input. So never use these keys. Weak keys, you know, twice encryption will give you that. Okay, that's by analysis and all of that, right? So what will happen in here, 64 bits, this cipher, this cipher, gave you the plain text. This is a weak key, which are a few, four weak keys, don't use them. Make sure you don't use them, all right? Uh, semi-weak keys, this we call them semi-weak keys, okay? Uh, so th these... If you look in here, the, if you use them, they will generate only two in the rounds. They generate only two, you know, uh, two, so 950, 950. So it's only two kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, during the rounds data. Supposedly that every round has completely different data. So these are semi, they call semi weak, weak keys. So, okay. 
what is the probability of, uh, of randomly selecting our weak keys? So the weak keys we have seen, so how many keys you could generate in this? 2 to power 56, right? Which is like huge number of keys, all right? How many weak keys we have? We have four weak, semi-12, and 48, that's the total. So, you know, what is, what is the, what's the probability that you cannot get weak keys? You take this number, you divide it by this number, you get this number. It's a very low probability, very low probability, right? Very low. So, you, do you have to worry about it? You don't have to worry about it, right? Uh, and here, let us test uh, the claim about complement keys. We have used arbitrary key and plain text to find cybertext. If we have the key complement and the plain text, we can obtain the complement of the previous key. So you have a key, okay, and that's a complement. You have a plain text, and that's a complement. You know what's complement? You replace 0 to 1 and 1 to 0, right? All right. And then the ciphertext. So the clip, if you have the complement, you can't get, you know, the, 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 the key. All right. So one of the problems of, of this is short key. Short key. So usually the longer the key, the more secure. All right. So we could use double this and trouble, uh, triple this. Not trouble, triple this. Okay. All right, I'll skip this part. So you could use a double desk where you have 64 bit, okay, two keys, two different keys, key one and key two. So this, and then you do another desk with another key. So if you combine 56 plus 56, what is the size of the key now? One and 12. So key one and key two becomes one and 12. It will be much more stronger, right? All right, so you have in here the middle, the middle, so you, 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 you do the 1 and 12 bit, you divide it into 56 plus 56, you do encryption first with 56, and you do encryption with another 56, and you reverse the process in here. That's what we call doubleness, all right? What is the advantage that you have to a longer key? You have longer key, all right? The problem is with double this that, uh, you know, it's, uh, you could, if you create, there's a problem called meet in the middle attack, okay, that, you know, um, the reality is, supposedly, I, I mean, if you have, if you have like the 56 key, 56 bits, so what is the number of key possible keys? Two to power 56. Theoretically, if you have one to 12, bits for a key. What are the options for keys? Two, right? Right? But that's not a true. Because if this is a problem, meet in the middle. So how much the improvement the reality is not from two to power fifty six to two to power twelve. The reality is two to power uh, fifty seven only. Which is not a big improvement because of the middle attack. attack. So you could, you could, from here, you know, if, you know try to figure the, the, the data. So for example, um, if you have the middle, it's in here, the middle, uh, 64 middle text, okay, which is encryption of key one plain text. If you try to, to cr using the key one and then the middle uh, uh, in the reverse using the decryption key to the decryption in here key to if you can match between them you'll be able to reduce your search from 2 to the power 1 and 12 to 2 to power 157 so the improvement is very slightly all right i leave you to figure it out right the better is to use what triple this so triple this so the trouble is what you do, you, you encrypt with key one, decrypt, okay, so what you do in here, okay, uh, uh, you encrypt, decrypt, encrypt, using key one, key two, key one, and you reverse the process in here, decrypt, encrypt, decrypt, 
Let's call it triple this. Okay, how many keys you have? Yeah. Two still, but the, there's extra process in the middle and here. You could use triple this with three keys. Three keys, okay, and it will, it will, three keys. Now, what is the size of the, the key? Is? How much? One and twelve plus fifty-eight. One seventy-four. One seventy-four. One sixty-eight. One sixty-eight. Right? Okay. So, so how many options? We have one this. We have double this. We have double. We have triple this with two keys. We have triple this with three keys. Three keys. All right. When you look at the analysis, triple this with three uh, keys and with uh, analysis. So. I mean, you analyze the different attacks could happen, the brute force attack, differential cryptanalysis, linear cryptanalysis. It's, an, uh, it's a very, it's a very, you know, for a brute, uh, brute force attack. What's a brute force? Trying all the keys. So for one this, how many keys there? One. Two to power 50. For one this. For one this. One key. What, two to power 56, right? For double this, you have two keys, so it will be? Two to the power? No, we said no. I mean, 112, but you know, you could reduce it with the middle mat, two to the power 50? Seven. Seven, yeah. right? But with two keys, but triple this, it will be two to the power 12. And triple this with three keys, two to the power? 56 plus 56 plus 56, 168, right? Yeah. All right, so what is a brute force? Uh, 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 brute force is to try the keys. So the larger the key is, the more secure, right? Yeah. All right, we understand that, right? So we have discussed the weakness of the short cyber key in this. Uh, combining this weakness with the key complement weakness, it is clear that this can be broken, uh, uh, broken using two to fifty-five pictures. Anyways, all right. Uh, then differential, uh, differential. It has been revealed that designers of this already knew about this type of attack and designed S boxes and chosen sixteen as the number of rounds to make this specifically resistant to differential cryptanalysis. So we show an example of this differential cryptanalysis. Uh, linear, uh, linear uh, cryptanalysis. Also, it's a, um, 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 you know, it's a very secure for that. So, linear cryptanalysis is newer than differential cryptanalysis. This is more vulnerable to linear cryptanalysis than differential cryptanalysis. S boxes are not very resistant to linear uh, cryptanalysis. It has been shown that this can be broken using two to the power forty-three pairs of non-plain text. So if, if you know, if you, if you have non-plain text, you could up to two, you know, you could use two to about 43 pairs of non-plain text. However, from the practical point of view, finding so many pairs is impossible. I mean, how can you find that such number of pairs for non-plain text, right? Okay. Anyways. So that's the disk, that's a real algorithm that, you know, this triple disk, I'm sure that when you configure your email or some applications, you have seen it, okay? And you've seen it. So what we have learned from here, we have learned that the Kirchhoff's principle, that we don't hide the algorithm, the algorithm known to anybody. So yourself, you know, the decryption algorithm technique, technique right? All right. Uh, what we have to hide is the key, all right? That's number one. Number two, what we have learned, the longer the key is the stronger the algorithm. All right, the stronger the algorithm. So 56 actually in today's standard is a very short key. I mean, nowadays we're looking for 512, 256 at least, 1K, 1024 1, bits. The, the, the longer the key is, the more secure. So this nowadays considered in the weak side not the stronger side. It still is a very strong. Number three, the last thing about this, you could implement it as a hardware. So as uh, like a chip in the hardware, because software, it will, it will consume more CPU power. So in the motherboards, in the hardwares, you could make it built in as a chip. It has one function is to do the disk 
encryptions. We have also learned all the pre what we have learned from the previous lectures. Okay, we have learned how to use B boxes, expansion boxes, shrinking boxes, uh, S boxes, P boxes, <coughs> white noise, the XORs, right? The uh, shift registers that we used. We use everything we have learned before in this uh, algorithm. For any algorithm, when you study it, you have to analysis that, uh, do analysis for it. Analysis comes from studying the attacks, possible attacks, and how the algorithm resists these possible attacks, which we studied today. All right? So next week, we're going to study another algorithm, a little bit more complex than this. All right? And we're going to continue until the end. As I told you, um, uh, every lecture is very important to the next lecture. So please make sure that you follow step by step and you follow each lecture before you come before you come to the following lecture it will make your life much more easier when you come with uh, uh, the needed knowledge um, uh, to that that class thank you